of light. We can't quit. It's about freedom. It's not about a revival, but it's about a revolution that brings forth freedom. Your choice chooses you. Come on, warriors of light. We can't quit. Follow truth. It's not about revival, but it's about a revolution. Your choice chooses you. Are you ready to dive deep? Let's seek together and move beyond the status quo. For the hidden things belong to the Lord. There is a generation who is no longer satisfied with playing church. This is your day. This is your hour. It's time for the real seekers to stand up and be counted. This is The Quest for Truth with your host, Karina Pataki. Your choice chooses you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Quest for Truth, Hidden Mysteries TV. I am your host, Karina Pataki. Oh, my goodness. I am so excited about to jump out of my seat to have with us, oh my gosh, incredible, dear, sweet friend. And I like to call her my sister, um, Laura Eisenhower. Laura, thank you so much for being here with us. Oh my gosh, such a treat to have you. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you so much, Karina, for having me. Oh my goodness, last time um, we had you, actually I had the joy to be in your house with you. Uh, and just interviewing you and talking to you We're back in, let's see, October. So it seems like forever. It seems like forever. And you shared such amazing things, Laura. People oh. were so blown away. The comments that we're receiving, you know, uh, the wisdom that comes out of you, the truth, the power that's behind that and the energy, the knowledge and the wisdom you carry is just, is, is mind blowing, Laura. It's incredible. Oh, thank you. Gosh. Yeah, I mean, we had so many comments and I was uh, just texting somebody before we started and I told her, you know, I'm going, I have an interview with Laura and she's like, oh my gosh, I love Laura. Oh my God. Ah. So you, you have such an impact on so many people, Laura, you have ah. such an impact. You carry such an incredible blueprint and so much wisdom that just flows out of you. Jeez, Karina, man. You're, you're I, wish I, knew, I, I wish I could remember that when I wake up in the morning. I'm just like, what? What you what we need to do is record this and then you you just play it. Record this <laughs> words and just play it every morning because oh, that's, so that's who you are. You're incredible, Laura. And oh. thank you. Thank you. I know you're busy. I know you have a busy schedule, but you're you're here with us. So today, let's just talk, Laura. You are so incredible in uh, many, many things. But if we can just pick your brain today on certain subjects, beginning with um, the, what is going on cosmically, we, the time and the seasons we are in are so like insane and cool and good, but insane uh, at the same time, because you're so brilliant in reading and understanding the, um, the cosmology and the, the, the language, the frequency of everything as it relates to what's happening. What do you see happening? Hmm. Wow. <clears throat> well, hmm. Pluto returns. People have been hearing about, right? Pluto returns to the United States. And mm -hmm. it's not that it's just the United States. I mean, it impacts the whole world, especially since we've had uh, the Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto conjunctions as of 2019. So, you know, without getting into all the astrological terminologies, um, yes. it's just a very Plutonic period. The last time Pluto returned to the United States, was 1776. So like very, very, you know, powerful times in that respect. And, uh, and it's going to peak again in July and then again, uh, the end of December. And what it really represents is this uh, dark night of the soul, kind of like death journey, life review, kind of transformation cycle, right? So anytime we experience Pluto, that's the journey it takes us on. But yeah. because we're dealing with a control system, the deep state cabal and everything that is linked to that because they understand this they use that against us yeah uh, to promote through propaganda and psyops and psychological yeah psyops and false flags and all sorts of tactics yes. uh, a fear response a fear of death a, a fear of everything so that we go into survival so that we don't initiate ourselves through this birthing through this rebirthing and what they want to do is sort of like metaphorically like 
a woman giving birth and then a doctor snatching it away, maybe sticking needles in it and like sending it off somewhere it's separate from the mother, right? I mean, that sounds horrible, but I mean, it's sort of similar versus like rebirthing and really connecting with nature, the regenerative power of nature and what Pluto can really, really bring us. It's very uncomfortable because it throws a person into a place of feeling like, no support or no assistance. Mm. And that's where the crone energy comes in. And the crone energy has developed wisdom based in being in that darkness. And, and that's why it holds a lantern. That lantern is finding that inner light of wisdom within, no matter what kind of darkness or adversity you're facing, it cultivates this greater strength of wisdom. That if we can do this as a collective and as individuals, we will come out of these times utilizing all this adversity and all this confusion to our benefit, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we got to be very careful of everything being thrown at us because all these astrological alignments, the North and South node that shifted from South node, Sagittarius, North node, Gemini, which had a lot to do with communication, speaking truth. Um, south node has to do with the past and things we're drawing upon. The North node is what we're here to integrate. So we were in the Sagittarian South Node, drawing upon wisdom and, and, and expansion, you know, people really looking for truth. Uh, the whole concept of ascension and disclosure got like really, you know, amplified in the world. And then the North Node to integrate has to do with communication. So you see content creators, people on social media sharing truth, and then boom, they're like, okay, because that's the growth period for humanity, let's mask it, let's censor it, let's block it. So now we're in South Node Scorpio, North Node Taurus. And the South Node is something that we draw upon. It has to do with the past. Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. So we're drawing upon all these death cycles we've ever been through, all the times that we've ever like died and come back, you know, and reincarnated, all, all the death pictures we have of ever maybe facing death because of persecution um, and all those fears attached to it, or, you know, loss of loved ones, maybe past lives where we died a horrible death. Um, we have to face that and we have to like find some kind of peace with that so that we can integrate the opposite, which is the North Node, which is in Taurus, ruled by Venus. And Venus is playing a really huge role right now. Mm -hmm. Venus also rules Libra. Venus is conjunct Mars in Aquarius. Venus is going to be conjunct Saturn at the end of the month. So basically the power of Venus, which mm -hmm. through the course of history has been forming a perfect pentagram in the sky, is creating these corrections so that the heart frequency of the Divine Mother can blast away the Saturn moon matrix patriarchal program sort of imbalance of the masculine and feminine and infuse us mm -hmm. on an energetic level with heart, with the ability to integrate polarity, to step into higher dimensional frequencies based in the fact that we are learning to harmonize and balance um, these polarities and remove the distortions, the programs, the ancestral patterns and uh, the indoctrination programs mm -hmm. and all of it so that we can really be in our Christ Sophia divine template. And this is one of the most powerful years to claim that, but the most powerful and unbelievable times of every force under the sun doing everything it possibly can to get in the way of it. Every tactic under the sun to destroy families, communities, yes. partnerships, relationships, and just to keep us in survival. So we keep answering to outer authority because Saturn is not ready to, to be kicked off its throne. Um, huh. But us as individuals um, are going to step into the higher Saturn, which represents being a teacher and a master, self-mastery. And I think I talked about that a lot in our last interview. So I'll kind of like keep it at that. But this is we're moving to the next level of it right before, you know, 2023, when Pluto moves into Aquarius, the Uranus Saturn squares show the friction of Saturn holding on as tight as it can to a very liberating humanity. Humanity is awakening. Uh -huh. It's yes. becoming more liberated and the squared aspect means friction. So Saturn is holding on to dear like, no, you're not allowed to be sovereign. We won't have a food source anymore. And meanwhile, all this stuff is happening with the masculine and feminine energies and this plutonic transformative stuff while they're doing everything under the sun to make sure like we get confused we get uh, anxiety ridden and we're just all fighting against each other wow yeah laura this is such an incredible um uh, thing that you're touching on right now all this fighting with each other and all this disunity and all this um this confusion and it's so such a evil strategy to bring about division it's when really we special. should be uniting in order to see humanity set free. Number one, I have the heart for children. All the children that are being 
uh, torture that are being sacrificed and horrific stuff done to them. We need to unite in order to number one, bring, bring freedom from my heart to them, to humanity, to the planet, to the cosmos and so on and so forth. And if, if these dark forces can keep us divided, then they, they've won more than half the battle, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, go ahead. That is more the goal than the weapons. Because yes. the weapons get into our system to help them achieve this result, right? If we have a lot of heavy metals in our body, if we're drinking fluoridated water, um, mm -hmm. GMOs, uh, and just watching TV and just like being like sucked into it all, well, it makes it a lot easier to conquer and divide us and to pit us against each other. Um, but once we break that programming yes. and we step into our divine center and we realize what we need to protect, and what mm -hmm. we need to like heal and what we need to release and what we need to uh step into our body will naturally be able to begin to release the foreign substances and toxins and heavy metals a lot easier of course nutrition and the way we live our life is gonna of course help too we don't want to keep putting that stuff in our body but sure. once we break free of that part of it then all the things that try to create that antenna or that relationship with it begin to fall away because uh, we, we, we've gotten to the root of it because that is the root of it. As long as we're not united, as long as relationships are in strife and conflict and drama, as long as we're in a lower vibration, yes. they're just like, oh, I can vamp off of that. The archons are like, yay, a feeding yes. friends, right? And the minute we're like, I can cut the cords and I can step away from it, no matter what we've been breathing in, no matter what our past has been, no matter what's in our bodies, no matter what choices we made, even with the jab, um, we will begin to uh, untangle it from our DNA and actually our system will be able to release it because the light frequency of truth and uh, divine love and moving into these higher levels is the higher technology over the dark weaponry. Yeah, this is so, so good. So what you're saying, Laura, is if I'm understanding the understanding correctly, is that the the the, the crap that we put in our body that's in there is totally um, uh, working with the evil agenda. So it's 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 part of it's part of their agenda. Yeah, right. But but the, but if, if it was enough to just put that stuff in our body, I mean, it's it's not just our nutritional choices. I mean, mm -hmm. we're exposed to it. Our skies well, are, we are. We are. in our soil, it's everywhere. We can't really escape mm -hmm. it. 5G towers. Mm -hmm. But you know, if we have like, you know, bad nutritional habits, that's just gonna make it even right. worse. Yeah. Um, but but the real uh, weapon, I would say is the false media, um, Come on. The, yep. the, yeah, the indoctrination in the school systems, what we're raised to believe, what has been mirrored to us from society and from our parents that are dealing with similar traumas, but they don't know how to heal from it. So they pass it on to their kids. Yes, um, right. Yeah. What we deal with in the school systems, what the medical industry has done to us. And so that is to me a greater weapon than by the absolutely, by absolutely. And all because, because as long as they have our minds and we're absolutely. like, like, like buying into it and, and, and have a dependency relationship with it. Um, then that's, that's the partner we've chosen. Just like, you know, a marriage partner. That's why I always compare it to, this is like a time of breaking up with a narcissist abuser. Yeah. Because when we move into true love, despite what might be in our bodies, we have spirit that holds dominion over physical matter, mind over matter. Yes. That's why I, when, when I was a kid, I was so fascinated with like Ripley's Believe It or Not. I'm like, how can they eat light bulbs and not die? Like, you know, they're like in some sort of elevated state or maybe, you know, it was some sort of trickery. But what, once a person gets to a certain level, like a yogi status, Yes. Um, or just some certain level of mastery, the, the human body defies the impossible. And there's so many examples of this, uh, whether it's a, a, somebody that manifests miracles, some, somebody that just does like, you know, puts nails in their head or through their, and, and they're still alive. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so we, we have to realize that once we get mastery over the mind, and once we are in our truth, once we disconnect from the propaganda, the false narratives, the indoctrination, and all the stuff we've been fed for lifetimes, especially mm -hmm. starting in our childhood in this incarnation, once mm -hmm. we just say, wait a second, that's not my truth, and we step into what we really are and who we really are, we begin to upgrade our DNA, we begin to switch on the dormant strands of DNA that it's called junk DNA, yes. and that vibration is the most ultimate technology that crushes Come on. all of this, um, like, like, infiltration of the planetary grid network, all these um, EMFs coming in from 5G, 
uh, it, it, it neutralizes toxins. Uh, and I believe, you know, the body like begins to notice, like, you know, the mind control links into the heavy metals, right? Once the mind control is done, the body is able to just be like, wait, this doesn't belong here. But at the same time, the body needs certain metals and minerals. Right. Uh, so it's all about finding the balance, but where we can check ourselves and see if we're in balance or not in balance is how much are we buying into this bull? How much are we like living like every day in like fear and doom and gloom of what tomorrow's going to bring? Okay. Maybe you need to do a, a heavy metal detox, but also get in touch with your divine inspiration and write it down and, and shield yourself. And remember that like you are so powerful and so creative. Um, don't let that infect your creative mm -hmm. channels. And because when they do infect your creative channels, you're enabling the very thing you don't want because you believe it's real. And and the thing is, it does become real if we believe it. Of course, of course, because we're we're the ones that create our own reality. Yeah, of, of course, you know, we're the observers. So when you observe that, you're creating that. You guys, I want you to hear what Laura is saying. It's so incredible. She is releasing a clarion call for whosoever chooses to engage in this, in this truth of remembering who you are standing in your power because when you awaken and you stand in who the abilities that you really have really the person that you really are because as divine creator is as god the father whatever you know i call him god my father because that's what i holy spirit is my mom he's my daddy you can yeah, call him perfect. divine creator whatever but you are as he is so are you so when you awaken in that reality it, Everything else will fall down, even if you had the jab, like Laura was saying, or, or you know, the, what they release in the air, what you put in your body by choice or not by choice, it's all going to crumble when you just stand in your power and realizing who you are. So that's what Laura is saying. She's, yeah. she's um, you know, she's releasing this call of remember who you are, stand in your power. Laura, that is absolutely incredible because what I'm noticing, Laura, and I want to ask your opinion on this. I'm, I was a little bit in shock. I understand what's happening, but I'm going to just uh, ping pong it to you. People that were truth sayers in this other creative illusion that they tried to create over for two years now, for over two years, people that saw through that, people that saw through the bull of the uh, media, people that saw through the bull of the elite, what they were saying, they realized pff, anything they say is a lie. So let's look at the opposite of what they're saying. So people that were awakened, all of a sudden with this other um, panic demic that they're trying to create are completely blinded. All of a sudden, like they forgot all of that. And now they're like, I, Laura, I'm literally in shock. I'm like, I know, whoa, 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 whoa. I know, I know. Oh, truth before, all of a sudden you're on the same side of truth as with the, you know, the O's and the C's Shocking. and the, so Laura, what 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 do you see happening? I know what I see. What do you see happening? Well, a lot of people kind of just go along with what seems to be, oh, they're awakening, right? And then when it really comes down to the test, well, are you really awakening? Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, no, you're not quite there yet. You you think you are, but you're not quite there yet. It's kind of like, you know, somebody who has all this confidence, like, oh, I can do that, you know? And all of a sudden it's just like, you know, no, it takes a little training, it takes a little skill. You have to be willing to go down the real rabbit holes, not just the ones on. that are enough to just say like, you know, you're, you're going for it, whether it has to do with like spiritual healing and something about consciousness or whether it has to do with exploring disclosure kind of topics. I mean, it, it, you know, it's kind of a test right now. And that test doesn't mean you're going to pass or fail. That test means that wherever you're at, you have more work to do. Don't be afraid of that work. You have to just kind of go back into the gym and, and just keep, keep going. Right. And okay. even if uh, the choices you made put you in a more detrimental position, it's pushing you to the edge to have that breakthrough, to take it, that power back. So some, mm -hmm. you know, so, so the people that are going to be facing uh, the harshest situations, um, it, it, it's that choice. I mean, once you put more weight yeah, on, come on what you're trying to push against when you're in the spiritual gym, it either mm -hmm. crushes you or you push back. So, so you know, it's going to get harder for people the more, you know, they, they, they sort of avoid all of this yep. Yep. and uh, they're either going to have a breakthrough that says, I, yeah, or it's going to be like, Puh! like, okay. And, and then what? So if they don't see that metaphor though, they're not going to look at that obstacle as a opportunity to gain strength. They're going to mm -hmm. say, I want somebody else to solve it. I'm hitting that wall and somebody else is going to give me the solution from mm -hmm. the government, some outer authority. 
-hmm. instead of being like a warrior spirit or an athlete that says, I'm going to figure out how to jump over that obstacle. Mm -hmm. Even if it takes me a hundred times, even if I'm watching people do it so much quicker than me, it's not a competition. It should be inspiring, you know, Mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, if they can do it, I can do it kind of thing. So these kind of obstacles, um, is not just like, you're just being tested and you pass or fail. It just means that it's going to take and require a lot more work. Uh, and, 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 and people like us are going to be the coaches and, and, and those that are going to be cheering you on instead of judging you for the fact that you might not have gotten it. I mean, that's not fair. This is the most unbelievable abuse and ridiculousness. And I have so much compassion for people. So it's like, you know, instead of like bumping your head and, you know, answering to an outer authority because you can't overcome that obstacle and they have the solution. People like us are going to be like, no, you can do this. No matter how out of shape you are, no matter how poisoned you are, we're going to get there. And um, so we need to just kind of like stay in that level of inspiration because once we overcome the obstacles, we become the override frequency. We become, we become senior to these lower entities. And uh, no matter how challenged we are on any level, um, as long as we can begin to connect with our soul and our higher guidance, what do I do in the face of this? The synchronicities will provide us the tools and modalities and the healing herbs and supplements and even technologies that might be coming in because it's going to answer to you. Now that you're done with the mind control and the social engineering and buying into the narrative and you're saying, I can't believe I made this decision. Maybe, you know, I see now that it's detrimental. Then connect and say, please get me out of this mess say it to your divine heart, say it to your soul, say it to spirit, say it yes. to the earth, and you will be guided yes. into a healing journey like you've never believed. Because people who are told they will never be able to walk again, walked again. People that have gone through MK Ultra programs that have been through satanic ritual abuse are holding incredible divine light and they're able to talk about it. People, humans can overcome the most unbelievable stuff, but if you're not willing, you're gonna still be looping in Absolutely. this trap for a while, but you'll never be permanently enslaved. Yeah, it's it's a choice. And I always say this, you know, our choice, my choice chooses me. You know, it's, 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 it's not, you know, there's a scripture that says in, in the Bible, there's a scripture that says, many are called, but few are chosen. So again, that scripture does not mean God likes you better than he likes me or God likes me better than you. So he chose, I choose you. No, I, don't right. choose, yeah. I choose you. Cause you're, you know, cause, cause your gra- uh, great grandfather is Eisenhower. I choose you, Karina. I don't choose her. I don't, that's not what happens. It's, it's as simple as my choice choosing me. Many are called, all of us are called, but it's our choice that will choose us to do, to walk in the fullness of what we exactly. were to do. Right. Yeah. And that's so what Eisenhower really, did. Just because he's my yeah, relative doesn't mean that there's any special chosenness. I mean, every other, and I'm not saying they're not doing profound and important things. Yes, on they aircraft, are. Yes. But, but, but uh, I'm like other family members and people connected to this family. I mean, we're all family. There, there's, there's no reason that that does anything different to me than it does to anybody else. It's an inspiration though, right? It's like, okay, Absolutely. he had a choice. Do you want to try and take this down? Do you want to like be a leader, you know, he had a choice. I have a choice, you have a choice. And uh, in this choice that we have, we are the chosen ones because the chosen ones are love and wisdom and divine purpose that has to be backed by willpower and the willingness to do it. And every single one of us is a chosen one and, and we just have to answer to it if we want. And if not, you know, you're not chosen until you choose to be chosen. Absolutely. So good. You know, for those of you watching, I know there's many people out there that are struggling with, you know, with um, uh, feeling less than or not feeling special, not feeling, please listen to what Laura's saying. Yeah, I feel saying. that way all the time. You know, I mean, people wouldn't think that, right? Like I'm, I'm like, like Laura feeling not special. No, that's uh, well, I mean, I, I mean, oh, I, it, I wouldn't say that like, that's the yeah. exact sentence that goes through my head, but oh, you have no oh. idea. You just ask Kevin, have it, have it. <laughs> Poor Kevin. But see, oh if, no, you don't. But I'm see, this is like, the thing, oh, though, Laura. I, this oh is, man, I'm so hard on myself, and I'm just processing so much grief all the time, and regret, yeah. or like having constant life reviews. If I just did this, and I know yeah. better, right? But I, I, I go there all the time, more than I, I care to admit. I think all, I just, honestly, I all of us do. So if we go there, you know, imagine how many people out there go through this, and we just want to encourage you. 
you know, we're all special. You're special. You're chosen. Don't let any voice, listen, any voice you hear that speaks the opposite of that is a voice of the dark evil forces. Yeah. Do not engage that. So I what, what that. they're actually saying the truth is the opposite. When you hear a voice saying, you're not special, you're not good enough, you're not chosen, the opposite, the truth is actually the opposite. Yes, you're chosen. Yes, you're special. Yes, you're more powerful than what you can imagine. Laura, yes. isn't that true? Isn't that what's in that's, us? That's mm -hmm. what I live for. And that's yeah. what I want to remind people of because that is such a unconscious insecurity that exists yeah. within people. I'm not worthy or I, I, I don't have this because... Uh, I don't have this gift or this ability, or I'm not strong. It's just, yeah. you know, man, how many times like have I faced that and, and just been in a fetal position or even bedridden? It's just like, yeah. but, but I made a choice. It's like, this is my mission. And it's so wired into me that if I step away from it, it's horrendous. Uh, nothing feels right. Um, but when I step into it, uh, it all begins to make sense and I feel grounded and it is my purpose. But, but then, you know, there's all the attacks and there's all the things that want to make you second guess yourself or doubt yourself. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just not easy, but the thing is we're all here together. There's different forms of leadership. There are different purposes. There are different ways to express one's mission. It's not a one size fits all. As long as you're being true to yourself, that is what you should answer to follow your heart, be true to yourself. Then you are on your path and you have chosen you and you are a chosen one. Oh, that's so good. Laura, you're so awesome. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So good. So good. Laura, with um, let's go on back a little bit to uh, uh, piggyback on um, this thing of people that uh, are now all of a sudden just blinded people that saw the truth. But now with this situation in the world that's happening are blinded. Um, do you feel like there is some sort of AI technology that has been released through the waves of the television that is hypnotizing oh, yeah. people? Okay, Because that's what I've seen. I've seen, I've literally seen the hypnotic state of people. Um, it's like an AI technology that was released through the airwaves, through the frequencies to literally just hypnotize people to believe whatever the media. Have you noticed that? And if, what do you think people need to do to break out of that? Okay, well, a lot of us are exposed to it some are more immune and some aren't. So yes. I think it depends a lot on uh, our childhood conditioning and things about past lives because they mm -hmm. target people's self-worth and mm -hmm. ego. So when people go through the motions of being in the system, the school systems, going to college, university, getting degrees, having sort of indoctrination, sort of subtly being like pushed into it to the point where uh, if you were to begin to question it, then you're questioning everything you ever worked really hard for. And people work real hard, right? And I'm not saying that there isn't huge benefit to the skills that people have developed and the degrees that they've gotten and the achievements that they've had. You don't have to ever lose that just because there's an awakening happening and you're gonna find out that some of it isn't really accurate. There's much more to science than what we've been taught. Uh, a lot of history has been rewritten. Um, humble yourself yeah. enough to say, okay, well, at least I have intelligence and I was able to go through the system. I know enough. I'm going to keep what resonates and I'm going to question the rest. I'm going to utilize these skills, but I'm going to allow myself to be open-minded enough to add something to it that is going to even make it even more outrageously awesome than it was before. But I think people are so afraid because um, of all that they've you know, sort of achieved that even if they seemed awakened, even if they were standing up for causes that uh, were... Um, beneficial to humanity, even if uh, they, they uh, adopted certain careers that are in service to humanity, mm -hmm. even if uh, they participated in certain movements that seem progressive and like uh, mm -hmm. part of like, you know, human evolution. All right, just step back for a second. You know, don't be ashamed. I don't think any of us uh, haven't faced that sort of like, oh man, okay, this is behind that. Okay. Wow. Okay. I, I believed in it for a while, but I, I can't go there anymore. It's just like a relationship. You know, you fall in love and it's like, oh, wow, I'm with a narcissist abuser. Okay. Yeah. But do you stay with it just because you want to prove yourself right that you decided to date him? So you kind of got to bring it down to that level. Like, you know, and, and, and find a greater inspiration with your self worth connected to the strength of being able to say, wow, I'm really able to look at this honestly. The red flags, the things that people have been screaming out, trying to share these red pillars, so-called mm -hmm. conspiracy theorists, or these mm -hmm. spiritual woo-woo people, whatever. Drop those labels because you know it's they've all been in certain societies so that 
People like us are ignored. You know, your best friend that you grew up with, a family member, even your own child, or even your, you know, it's like, really? You don't want to listen to though. So, so just step back and know that you've achieved a tremendous amount, but you can take it to the next level. We can divorce ourselves from that system. We can starve it and we can begin to build community and utilize all these skills and, and pull together our resources so that the doctors, the teachers, and, 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 and all those that have gained this great education from the system or society, we can begin to look to each other and, and get land and get retreat centers, healing centers, and just do mm -hmm. it right. So mm -hmm. I think um, the, the fact that it's shocking that some people haven't woken up is because they're still, I, I don't wanna say Stockholm syndrome, because mm -hmm. they don't even know that they're dealing with an abuser because they don't feel abused by it. They feel rewarded, right? Mm -hmm. But they need to uh, just sort of, uh, and they will, and yeah. everybody is at their own speed. But I sure. think the reason it's difficult is because they thought that the leftist stuff was more progressive, more about yes. being liberal. Oh, the LGBTQ and like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, and, and, and it's not, you know, and, and unfortunately like the Trump character and his personality was really off-putting to people. It's like out of all people, okay, they chose him, but you know, to push buttons at the same Absolutely. time, he was willing to go toe to toe with the cabal, right? <laughs> but at the same time, he has a really abrasive personality, especially to, um, you know, women who are overcoming sexual assault or don't like narcissists, or I mean, I, I wouldn't say he's like hardcore yeah. narcissist, but his personality character is very yeah. off-putting to people. But I think deep down, you know, there's a strength there that, you know, Absolutely. drop like having to like this guy as your best friend or like yeah. somebody you would invite for dinner. Like, you know, just maybe appreciate the parts that he has been able to play, but it's never been about giving our power over to leaders either. And mm -hmm. I think the incredible disappointment is gonna be uh, when those that chose to vote a certain way, whether it was for the T guy, whether it was for the other side, is that vote for you, you know? Whatever you feel is lacking in the world is something that's tapping on your consciousness and soul to say, maybe you're the one to step up and do it instead of put it all over here because all we're doing is arguing about right yeah. versus left and all this stuff. And even though uh, this administration seemed a little bit different, I think, uh, the cognitive dissonance, dissonance yeah. has a lot to do with uh, the ego attachment to not wanting to be wrong, starting to notice that like, whoa, this, this is getting way worse. Yeah. Can't really make excuses for it anymore. And yeah. then realizing that that character that you might think is the most atrocious might actually have a hidden warrior. So maybe we shouldn't be so judgmental and wounded and triggered all the time and just accept personality flaws and, and, and look deeper into each other because most of the triggers we see on social media are, I'm offended. I can't believe you said that. It's just Absolutely. like, you know what? Let it go. Can we just like appreciate like what this person yeah. is doing instead of the fact that he just said something stupid and like holding yeah. on to it? Be, and I'm not like, this is not, this, these are just examples. I'm not like promoting Absolutely. politics or tea guy or anything. I'm just saying, stop with the trigger reactions. Absolutely. You know, it's Absolutely. like people not liking me. It's like, oh, she has messy hair. She talks too fast. Oh it's like, gosh. listen to the content, people. Absolutely. Like, stop with the character judgments. Like, go deeper. Can you believe how triggered people are about the surface stuff still? It's like, yeah, ugh. Uh, you know, I know so many people that are just criticized. They're like, what are you smoking? I'm like, what are you eating? You want me to look in your window? That looks kind of crappy. I bet it's got a lot of bad ingredients. I mean, like how sick and like intrusive it's is stupid. that? Yeah, it's stupid. It's like, you know, it's, it's like, Laura, what we're talking about is, looking at a tree and to me let's say or to you or to somebody looking from the outside the tree looks so ugly ew what an ugly tree it looks old it looks you know the, the bark is old it's falling off but then it has beautiful fruit so when you're starving and there's this beautiful tree and all its fruit is putrefied and it can kill you so are we am i going to go oh well i'm not gonna ew because this is ill but yet the fruit that is there and if i eat it it will sustain me it will give me life or am i going to oh this is a beautiful tree even though it has crap fruit on there I'm, so it's that <laughs> mentality which which you that's know that's a perfect hard. metaphor for what I, what I was trying to make a point about i love it hey we're a high five <laughs> um i mean i and i think that's really part of maturity when we grow out of that stupidity um so you know, like what you're saying, uh, humanity is just maturing and, and, you know, we have to have, make a choice. Are we going to jump on that maturity process? Are we going to continue to, you know, stu stupid stuff. And then, then we wonder why the world and humanity is where it is, you know? So, so you guys, it's, it's high time that we as humanity mature. We got to mature. We got to go from the baby stage to, you know, the toddler stage. We got to go from the elementary teachings 
and understanding to the higher ones because all of this, Laura, like we've talked about it before, it, it, it's, it's, we got to do it. Nobody's going to do it for us. They're going to come help us. In other words, come alongside of us to yeah. help us achieve, but they're not going to do it for us. Exactly. I say, oh man, I swear we speak such the same language. It's like, yeah, I mean, it's on such a greater level. I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's just the way that us as adults or whatever, I don't, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know what the right <laughs> word is for, yes. we're, we're kind of beyond whatever because we're not in the program version, but we are, you know, the, the, yeah. the, the more elders. And, and we know that the children are here to teach us and be the leaders, but we mm -hmm. have to guide them to be the best of themselves, to yes. be, to, to support their passions and their dreams, to help them uh, just find that instead of like forcing them to do this math that they, that they don't feel passion oh, for. Gosh. They're not going to be a mathematician. They don't need that in life later on. That's hours and hours and hours of worthless studying, oh, no. worthless tests, just so this person can prove something when they're only proving it just to get like an A when th th they're never going to touch it again. And that's why I avoided it. I'm like, you know, yeah, I bet if I put my mind to it and I have with things that I couldn't care less about and I was yeah. able to master it, you know, and prove to myself, even though I got Fs for it when it was sh shoved in my face. Yeah. Um, but my point is, it's like, you know, we're guiding the, the, these next generations to just step into their passion, but to offer them choices so that they can have exposure and be challenged a little bit, not just to say, oh, do whatever you want, but okay, mm -hmm. let's present this to you. But like over the course of time, if you really are just like, I don't wanna do this, studying is too much, this is not interesting, then my gosh, let's not waste your time on it. And let's yeah. not crush your self-esteem and say you're stupid because you can't figure it out. You yeah. know, if you don't have an interest, you're not gonna wanna figure it out. But if you love it and you care, you're going to be either the best in that field, or you're just going to have so much fun doing it that the competition is not, not even there. You're just feeling fulfilled on a soul level and yes. it rocks your world. So, I mean, we have to change the way we uh, raise our children. And oh my gosh. it's so sad to see how messed up it's become lately uh, in a time yeah. where we're supposed to be really advancing, but it has to get super ridiculous. It has right. to get like absolutely absurd for some of these people to just be like wow you know i gotta stop yeah. and be a leader and an advocate for my children and like pull them out of this bowl this yeah. gender confusion stuff actually i was posting earlier and, and we were all talking about like being tomboys can you imagine if like you know my mom started to give hormone therapy to turn me into a boy or like oh yeah i need to have a sex change just because i'd like lived in the trees yeah. and I played like because you know because i didn't like you know certain yeah, like, Wendy oh was God. talking about that too, you know, because she said, you know, and I was a tomboy too. And Wendy was like, I was, I was a tomboy, you know, yeah, exactly what you say. Can you imagine if the parents, I was a tomboy, you know, I mean, that's, I would kick boys' butts all the time. Yeah, I mean, right. You know. <laughs> and even if one wasn't a tomboy, the whole deal is just be yourself, yeah, you know, whoever yeah. you are, you know, kids are naturally androgynous. They haven't gone through the hormonal puberty shift. That's not a time to be making these kind of decisions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it doesn't even matter how we express it. I mean, I kind of like, you know, like got in touch with like both sides of myself. Uh, I mean, I wasn't even thinking about it. I was just being me. I didn't have time to process it. I can't believe children are having to process this. It's so, and like, and like, you know, Dark people like time. us, we're just like, we want to just grab them all and just be like, come over here. Like, we're okay. like, I'm so sorry. You have to deal with it. But so many strong star, star seeds, you know, yeah. that are sitting there like subjected to it are just going to be like, you know what? you know, yeah. I don't think so. Just like I was um, in, in the school systems, I had the strength to be able to say, I don't think so. And I know a lot of kids are just, they're going to be strong enough to uh, not, not go for it. The ones that do go for it are, are just like the people that we're talking about that, how are they still in this trance? Well, you know, those that are susceptible to being in the trance, we can only do our best with, but uh, those that are stronger, you know, they're going to stand up. And I did, and I just, uh, you yeah. know, I called BS out and I didn't care if it meant like, you know, I didn't get the yeah. rewards or the good grades. It's just like, right. God, it's so pathetic to me. Sorry. And no, I appreciate no. those. And I have a lot of respect for, for sure. those that have worked hard for what they've earned though. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, no, I get it. I mean, math was definitely not my subject. Writing, uh, you know. That was, that was just an example, but yeah. Arts, right? you know, stuff oh, like I that. Bet. You're like super creative. I mean, like, I, I, yeah. Team creativity and like creative freedom oh good <laughs> um so laura um where do you see what do you see 
humanity going? You know, I know right now it looks again, it's another, you know, another <sighs> illusion that uh, the dark ones are trying to create. So I know well, I, was, I was saying before that it's, we are like in an upside down reality. Good is bad. Good is being called bad and bad is being called good. The good players are called bad and the bad players are called good. So they're creating another, they're trying to create another uh -huh, uh, problem calling it bad when us that realize what's happening, we're realizing that there is good that's coming out of that, okay? Out of what's happening right now. Where, so my question is, where do you see with all this mess, all this, this war that's going on for good to eliminate bad, mm -hmm. but the media is not talking about it. They're showing it as, oh, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, where do you see humanity going? What do you, what do you see happening? I, I loved just really fast. I love that you had on the FBI, ex-FBI agent, mm -hmm. uh, your, your, your friend, I know I'm you guys did something. Yeah. Yeah, because he he brought some stuff out, up about this these these things that are happening. So, with all that knowledge that you have, in other words, and the knowledge that you have from within, where do you see humanity going as this? Where's the transition? Right, we are in the transition. Everybody on a personal level is going through their own personal transition. Uh, some earlier in their life than others, but on a collective level, I mean, this is a time of transition. Uh, and uh, we're in an ascension window period that is being, you know, uh, I mean, it's not just being like targeted. This goes back thousands of years. You know, the dark technologies that were put in place thousands of years ago were to generate artificial timelines based in our amnesia, based in how they can manipulate us, based in how they could create, you know, world wars and even yeah. like these, uh, you know, ET government agreements that uh, Eisenhower is uh, exonerated from and that's a whole other yes. view and story, but, yes. um, but, but the whole point is, is that all this stuff has been happening generation to generation of humans that incarnate with such a huge amount of amnesia that they're easily just uh, thrust into societal, uh, societal authority and control and whatever leader in your country is dictating and, and how they all kind of link up in their own like little circle to create the divide and conquer agendas and fun wars and all these different things to just like create nothing but drama, trauma, confusion, and uh, indoctrination and all this stuff, medical tyranny um, subtly until it's reached uh, a point, it's come to a head to the point where, wow, mandates, wow, really doctors and nurses and yeah. teachers are like being uh, put in an awkward position of, are you gonna go along with this narrative because you're afraid of losing your paycheck? Are you really yeah. willing to play that role? Or are you that unconscious that you actually think you're looking out for us. So everything is coming to a head and people are going to have to make choices. So as far as where's humanity going, it really, you know, depends on the individual mm -hmm. and the individual is going to impact the collective. I already feel the collective has, you know, the upper hand It's going to take a little while because consciousness moves faster than the physical plane. So it has to like ground itself. It has to plant the seeds. It has to really get more integrated into the physical so that the Holy Spirit energy on a cosmic and earthly level as well is doing the same and has been doing the same. So what I see and what is absolutely inevitable is when the mother energy and that force is so embodied that we all have an opportunity to experience in our own personal lives when we connect with spirit and we understand this in our divine blueprint that it is so grounded in our root chakra that we not only just walk the talk, we uh, become leaders in our own right in whatever way it will express itself, but we become advocates for what's important. We, we protect our children and, and we don't comply. We don't, these aren't the times for that. So where mm -hmm. humanity is heading is that a lot of people are going to have a breakdown, which could lead to a breakthrough. We're going to see a lot of casualties as well. And we're going to see a lot of angry and confused people that are going to want to take it out on the messengers. And we're going to see a lot of angry and confused people that find people like us and are grateful. They're like, oh, thank God. All right. Um, man, man, I, I didn't even know that you were there or that you existed. I mean, it's a mixed bag. But the overall bigger picture of it all is we're in this massive alchemical shift. The mother energy is way stronger than all of this. And uh, that force is going to push people to the edge and to the breaking point of like the most gnarly, but most enlivening and awakening uh, kind of life review 
uh, yeah. to be able to say, all right, I need to readjust and get in touch. So maybe this part of what I learned isn't true. Maybe this movement has been funded just to create more division and conquered uh, like vibrations between friends and family. Maybe the stuff that I put in my body that I thought was actually going to help me um, wasn't a good thing for me. Well, the minute you wake up to that and you align and you accept what's really happening, the power of spirit and the power of who you truly are, I know, I don't just feel, and I don't want to say I know it like everybody else should know it, but I know in my heart, I wouldn't be here today for all the stuff I've survived and we all are, have gone through, you know, it will literally transmute and alchemize. That's why back in 2010, 11, why would I call myself a global alchemist? I'm like, sometimes when I, people read my bio, I'm like, is that really like what I call myself? But I'm like, yeah, like this is what it's awesome. about. And I'm only a voice for it. I'm not like doing it just all alone. I mean, this is what we're doing. We are allowing the substance of spirit to come into our physical vessel when we can align with our own truth and authenticity to create such a massive healing. And, and if it just sounds like, oh yeah, well, it sounds nice. Well, how do we do it? First mm -hmm. of all, we need to know that it's already happening on a cosmic and earthly level and everything under the sun is trying to distract us from it. So we don't have to figure it out or like, oh, what do I need to find? And like, what am I missing? No, go first within, go through your dark night of the soul, face the darkest and gnarliest and know it's temporary, know you're not alone and that you can just align and let the magic work its magic. If you can just let go of the things that you've become addicted to and attached to in society, or where your self-esteem or ego has bought into it to the point where you're so afraid of letting go of it, you can't just take a breath and allow mm -hmm. this force to enter your being and actually give you the most ultimate healing you can ever imagine. So, and, and once Laura, you align with it, your, your thought forms and the downloads you get are going to be ultimate wow. wisdom and they're going to rock the world and they're going to activate other people and you're going to feel a certain liberation that reconnects you to your inner genius and brilliance and creative imagination that can produce things that you'll be blown away by. You're going to blow your own mind, but you got to face that insecurity and inner child that says, I yeah. can't do it. I'm not talented. I'm not good enough. You so got to let that go. Mean, that's what you mean by uh, facing the dark night of your soul. Cause people may hear that and not understand what that is. That means literally looking in the mirror and facing whatever you've been afraid of. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, not everybody's dark night of the soul is going to be the same, but it's like, mm -hmm. You know, what is the root of these insecurities? Are you really insecure? Or are you just feeling uncomfortable in a world that doesn't see you and appreciate you? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people are really solid in their truth, but it's just like, they're really mistreated or really misunderstood. So why are you gravitated into letting it get the best of you? Okay. So that dark night of the soul might help you to let go of that, not, not yeah. notice it as much, not be so affected by it. And for other people, you know, it could be like horrific trauma and abuses or unresolved past lives. Uh, or it could be uh, belief systems one has adopted uh, with, uh, you know, institutions yes. uh, that really uh, mess with your head on a spiritual level. I mean, it really depends. Everybody's different. But when you go into the dark night of the soul, you have to just kind of be real with yourself. And it won't leave you alone until um, you're real with yourself enough to be able to determine it on your own terms instead of somebody else outside of you defining it. Because once you let go of somebody else defining it, uh, you know, yeah, it's going to be uncomfortable, but as long as you yeah. hold on to a person defining it, you're somewhat enslaved or dependent on somebody solving something that you know how to do within. And yeah. that is what we're being trained to do. And so all these adversities are uncomfortable so that we're like, just like push yeah. the max so that we're like, oh my God, the reason all of this has really let us down and it's all crap is because I was looking for me all along. So allow yourself to be offended and um, like embarrassed or like upset that, you know, it didn't work out and all these people outside of us let us down or the system is messed up, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go through all that. But remember like, wow, it was me I was looking for all along. So in yes. order to reclaim the fullness of that power, I'm going to have to face those insecurities, yes. those, traumas, those wounds, those distortions. But usually that's more surface because deep down, most souls know who they truly are. It's yeah. just hard to navigate in a human realm that's not going to necessarily uh, validate you for it or, or see that they're just going to throw the same bullshit or maybe 
puff you up and just to throw you down later or, or use you for all that you're worth or, you know, come into your life or take advantage of you. And this is what I love about talking to you guys, because this is the kind of vibration that is so beyond that, that like one really feels like a safety of like soul family. And once yeah. we really get to that core and we give it attention, even if we're not perfect yet or sure. perfect, and even if we're not like fully healed, once we at least acknowledge it, we find our soulmates, our soul family, and people that are on the same page. And I feel that that, that is the great leadership, not leadership that's hierarchical, but leadership that is right. and inspiring where people are like, yeah, I want to get, I want to get that activation because it's not challenging me to have to believe something outside of myself. It's, they're literally inviting me to find me and join mm -hmm. in and being sovereign where our differences are a blessing and we can mm -hmm. harmonize those differences um, because we're all being true to who we yes. are. It's not a one size fits all at all. That's why I love astrology because it's like every map is different. <laughs> absolutely. And you know- I guess this well, is the zero point when we let go of like it being a problem. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Right. Yeah. You know, no, 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 I love it. I love it. And um, just really fast, one more point uh, before I know you have to go, you're, you have stuff that you have to do it. So I honor that, I wanna honor your time, but uh, talking about the dark night of the soul, we need to understand that in be, beyond the darkness, there is a new day. Oh yeah, well, I so, mean, nature presents us every day. We yeah. literally wake up to just what you said every yeah. single day, but yet yeah. it takes such a long time for humans to realize, wow, dark and light. Yeah, yeah. So they work that, together, they're in a relationship. The integration absolutely. of polarity is what the sun and the moon are all about despite the mm -hmm. artificial components of some of it but yeah yeah and i mean you guys this is what laura's base is she's, she's encouraging us all to you know embrace the dark night of the soul if you will because as you walk through it you don't park there you don't remember even the scripture says in psalm uh, 23 though i walk to the vat through the valley of the shadow of death in a way, death is not there. It's a shadow. It's a shadow. So you have to walk through it because you're on the other side is the new day. It's a new day. Laura, I remember really fast, you know, we tried to escape communist Romania as a little girl. We attempted twice. First time we lost my dad on the border. You know, second time we got captured. Wolf dogs were, you know, were around me and, you know, ready to eat, rip my throat off. I all need to interview stuff. you. I want to hear more. Gosh. Yeah. All, all the stuff. Um, and it's, it's one, my first book actually that I've written. So in that, I remember we had to go and cross, we had to cross the Romanian border into Yugoslavia. And I remember the moon was a big, round, bright moon. It was so big. And Yugoslavia was beyond the hill. And I remember the decision was, you know, oh, the, the choice that was made completely changed the outcome because we had a choice. The second attempt was, are we going to go through the rest of the night, cross, cross that little hill and go into Yugoslavia and we would be set free out of the Romanian, you know, uh, uh, region to safety, or are, or are we going to find a place to sleep on the Romanian border and wait till the following night? If we would have just walked through the dark night of that soul experience, because let me tell you, it was dark for a seven-year-old girl, an eight-year-old girl, uh -huh. and. I just, it's so amazing because you don't get stuck. Unfortunately with us, we were stuck there. The choice was made to sit there, to spend the night there. And that's when we were captured on our second attempt. So again, you guys walk through the dark night, walk because beyond there is a land of freedom. It's a land where you are set free. It's a new dawn. It's a new beginning. Because if not, it will get you stuck in it. And once you're stuck in it, it will, it will continue that, that prison, whatever is keeping you a prisoner to that darkness will continue to dictate over you. So Laura, I love that you're saying that the dark night of the soul, embrace it, walk through it, deal with the crap that you have to deal with and walk on to the other side. That's so powerful. Oh. So powerful, Laura. Oh, well, thank you so much. Well, I mean, you, you've lived that life and you, you embody what I'm saying. And I mean, that kind of challenge pushes a person to find that inner resource oh. of, you know, the magic, the, uh, and when I say magic, it's the, the ability to be resourceful without having resources. Like there's the, the connection with spirit that, that, that dwells within in, in the face of the most ultimate adversity. It's like what, what a person can come out with 
is mm. so much different than this just being like so victimized by it Absolutely. where you know you're 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 like in such a survival energy that you can't hear your inner guidance. You can't hear your intuition. You're just like in so much panic and fear that it, the walls are closing in around you and the predators are like, right, like behind the next tree. It's like, there's a way to shift that energy where they can't enter that field. And, uh, and I remember in some of my most adverse times, which have been pretty extreme, which I don't tell m many stories about, but yes, when I, just kind of was able to laugh or just be like, I, I, you know, I, I can tap into a greater abundance and a miracle vibration, even though it has nothing to do with having any safety or security or anything in my bank account or anybody who is going to have my back or protect me. I have it in me to yeah. discover and having the capacity to pull out that treasure in those really dark and difficult moments, I think, uh, is why we keep coming back as humans mm -hmm. so that we can retrieve that inner treasure that, uh, they want us to forget about, you know? Wow, Laura, you are just such an incredible gift. Just incredible, incredible. Um, before I let you go, is there any, I mean, anything that you feel like you want to say one last thing to our incredible viewers? Oh, just uh, how much I love and appreciate you, Karina. And, Aww. you know, the, Wendy and it's you guys just being in my life and everybody who's willing to listen. And uh, I mean, I, I really feel we, you know, covered so much. Uh, my website's cosmicguide.org. I'm trying to build community uh, and, and help people transition out of positions in their life that they don't feel serve them anymore that are asking them to do things that they know deep down aren't like good for them uh, mm -hmm. and to begin to help provide resources for people to make that transition without going into panic. But the most important thing I think is just the last thing we talked about that regardless of what you have or don't have, Mm -hmm. you are the generator of abundance you are the generator and co-creator of what is going to take place on this mm -hmm. particular timeline just make sure you don't have an energetic relationship to you know what you don't want to see but even if you have to still play into the game you don't have to be of it you don't have to be in partnership to it just look at it like you know just some of the final paperwork to get out of that divorce even though if it's long and drawn out it doesn't matter you decide to be free you're going to be free and just be patient because the physical plane will catch up with it. That's incredible, Laura. Uh, so many, so much uh, gold, so many gold nuggets in what you're saying. So incredible. I encourage you guys, you may have to listen uh, two times, three times, because there's so much gold um, that Laura has releasing so much wisdom. And, and you as well. Gosh. Oh, thank you. And we're going to put all of Laura's information at the end of the video. So you guys know how to get in contact with her, be part of the community that she does. I mean, she's incredible. She's such an incredible gift for humanity and so much treasure in her. And I encourage you guys to connect with that treasure. So we're going to make sure you, there's, you guys have all the information to connect with Laura and to uh, just be blessed and grow from the knowledge Please. that she carries. Laura, you're thank so you so me. much. Love you so much. Thank I you for being here with, with us. You guys, thank you for being here with us. If you are enjoying these interviews, I, I ask you that if you would please consider subscribing to our channel, uh, liking it and sharing it with people that you know that would be blessed and this would benefit them. Thank you again, you guys, for watching. Laura, it's been an honor to have you. Love you so Honored much. We you. love you guys. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.